Morning. Morning everybody. Movie review time as England have just lost the World Cup. Uh, rugby World Cup final, that is, to South Africa. We were beaten by a better team. Well, there you go. Now, what's the movie? Well, it is... It's, a, it's a not a very memorable title, funnily enough. Uh, the title is Sorry We Missed You, the latest film by Ken Loach. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money, stick around, and you'll find out. Now, two things that I need to say, first of all, uh, because they do have a bearing on this film. The first thing is I used to run a home care agency, and we used to provide home carers to work with elderly people in their own homes. And one of the protagonists, or one of the lead characters in this film, is a home care worker. So I know something about what they are talking about and I know something about what I speak. The other thing is, I like a lot of people, probably too many people, buy a lot of things from Amazon. And when you buy things from Amazon, they get delivered and they get delivered by courier drivers. Now, do I know anything about self-employed courier drivers? Well, I do, funnily enough, not because I've ever been a self-employed courier driver or I don't think I even know a self-employed courier driver, but it's something that if you keep your ear to the ground and you read the papers, you do know something about it. And this film is about two people, a couple, Couple, one of whom is a man who's a self-employed courier driver, one of whom is a woman who's a home care worker. A bit of a sexist stereotyping of roles there. Why didn't they switch that round? Why they made it more interesting? Anyway, that's a separate point and not really germane to what I'm about to say. It's set uh, in the north. Uh, I assume it's Newcastle. They have Newcastle type accents. It looks vaguely like Newcastle. There are a couple of references to Newcastle United Football Club. And one of the points for me about this film is why are these kind of films always set in the north? Now, I know things are tough in the north, but I'm down south. Things are tough in the south too, guys. There are people in London who are struggling. There are people in Kent who are struggling. There are people in Croydon, where I used to live quite a long time, who are struggling. People in Bromley who are struggling. People in Sussex who are struggling. People in Cornwall, Stepton, Somerset. People all over the South are struggling, but somehow with these films, it's always people in the North. So they have these really broad Northern accents, really broad working class, put upon, trodden down uh, working class accents. Now that, that's, again, is it really germane to what I'm talking about in this film? No, probably not. What's it about? Well, this couple, one of whom's a driver, one of whom's a home care worker, uh, they struggle because they work in modern day... We still call it Thatcher's Britain, isn't it? It's funny that, because I, I guess it hasn't really changed, has it, from Thatcher's Britain? I mean, the Britain that we have now, Boris Johnson's Britain, it's very similar to Thatcher's Britain. It's a hard life, and it's a hard life for people who... These people aren't uh, unemployed. Uh, they're not on benefits, interestingly enough. They're both working. They're both working full-time, they're both working long hours, but they're struggling to make ends meet. And they're struggling to make ends meet because of the employment conditions they work under. So this film, and I, I did uh, comment before I went on the film that I was looking forward to a two-hour party political broadcast on behalf of the Labour Party, which is a bit like what this is. Now, it's making points about the type of employment contracts that people work under. Now, notice I don't say that people have to work under, because a lot of these types of contracts people choose to work under. Now, don't get me wrong. The thing about a zero-hours contract, for example, is it's not universally good, but nor is it universally bad. There is a grey area where a zero-hours contract works for some people. It doesn't work for everybody. I accept that. And I employed quite a lot of care workers for whom a zero-hours contract was ideal. And just as an aside, I wanted to employ care workers, not all of them, I'll be honest, I wanted to employ care workers on permanent contracts. And they did not want them for love nor money. Well, they might have wanted them for money, they weren't offered that, they might have wanted them for love, but they weren't offered that either. But the fact is, for their own reasons, and people are perfectly entitled to do this, they did not want them. Now, the delivery driver is a self-employed delivery driver. Now, self-employment and spurious self-employment, and I know uh, people who are employed on what are 
classed as self-employed contracts when they are really employees. This driver is employed under a self-employed driver's contract. Or, well, he's not employed under a self-employed driver's contract. He is regarded as a self-employed driver working for a, not working for, but working as a owner, I think they call it, a part owner of a delivery company. Now, of course, he's not a part owner. He's not really a franchise and he's not really self-employed either. So this film is about uh, what happens to them. They have two children, one of whom's a girl of 11, one of whom's a boy, probably about 15. Uh, the boy goes off the rails in various different ways and they have to try and get him back on the rails. Um, the couple uh, argue together, so far so working class kitchen sink drama, uh, look back in anger kind of thing. Have we seen it all before? Well, in a way we have. And I don't want it to sound that I'm particularly criticising this film, because I'm not. It is a very powerful film, and is a very powerful depiction of what things are like for a vast number of people in what I shall still refer to as Thatcher's Britain, working under employment contracts. So, they have a hard life. Do they come out of it? Is there a happy ending? Well... That would spoil it in a way. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying it would spoil it if it was a happy ending. I'm saying, I'm saying I don't want to spoil it for you. You should watch it for yourself. Everybody should see this film, particularly people who don't know what working in home care is like and don't know, or perhaps more precisely, don't care how a self-employed delivery driver working for not Amazon, but a company that contracts its services to Amazon, how they are paid, how they are penalised if they don't deliver their parcels on time or to the right place, and the kind of things that can happen to them if they somehow are late for work, are unable to work, perhaps because of sickness or family issues or, or whatever it is. So if you have only a passing interest in those kind of things, and you should have a passing interest in these kind of things because they are about what happens in Britain today. You should go and see this film. The thing I suppose, and, and you know, Ken Loach, he, he's an older guy now, his heart's in the right place, he cares about poor people, he cares about the state of Britain, he cares about how what austerity has done to people. But this film, it doesn't offer much in the way of solutions. And I think as you get, not so much when you get, just when you get older, but you realise that, that life is not black and white. When, when you're young, yes, it's black and white. Wasn't it George Orwell who said everyone's a socialist when they're 16? I mean, that life is black and white when you're young, but it's not black and white when you're old. And you also... You don't just want to see people who point out the problems. Ken Loach points out the problems and there is a very real problem, but it doesn't offer any solutions. Now, should this film offer solutions? Well, no, not really. It, it's not that kind of film. It's a, it's a drama, I suppose. But a drama that's couched a little like a documentary, that's couched a little like a party political broadcast on behalf of the Labour Party, ought to offer some solutions. Now, am I saying that the Labour Party offers some solutions to this situation? No, they do not. I know they talk about outlawing zero hours contracts, but that that isn't really the problem. They talk about a minimum wage of ten pounds, that isn't really the problem. These things will still continue. Adult social care in this country is a massive, massive problem. And I would direct you to this particular book, Dentures, Guns and Money, The Diary of a Home Care Worker, which is written by Rita Nemo, a home care worker who used to work for me, with uh, some input from me. You can get it from Amazon. But it tells you about how home care operates in this country and also why home care operates in the way that it does. And this film, it doesn't offer solutions to home care. And actually, I suppose I should say that the home care worker or her role or her job doesn't actually come out too badly in this film. The delivery of the self-employed uh, courier driver, his type of employment does come out of this very badly in this film, but that's not entirely the fault of the system. It's partly because of the situation he's in and the issues that he faces in his family, uh, which to a certain extent are inevitable. They're certainly inevitable in terms of this drama, because otherwise the film doesn't work. So. Should you go and see it? Yes, absolutely you should go and see it. Is it worth your money? Yes, absolutely it's worth your money. But unless, who, wasn't it Wasn't it Karl Marx? Was it Karl Marx or Audrey Roberts in Coronation Street? I always get them mixed up. 
who said that the point is not to interpret the world, the point is to change it. Now, Ken Loach, he reflects the world, to a certain extent he interprets the world. Does he change it? No, he offers some interesting thoughts sometimes on question time, but that, that isn't going to change things. And this film isn't going to change things. It might make people think again about uh, ordering something from Amazon, but will it? I don't think so. Will it stop me ordering from Amazon? Well... No, there are a lot of reasons why one shouldn't order from Amazon, one why one should support local shops, etc, etc. But the fact is the world changes. The world has changed. And we can't get rid of Amazon and go back to shops in the way we came any more than we can uh, put the toothpaste tube back into the tube. Or, or, yeah. <laughs> Anymore, we can put the toothpaste back into the tube, or even the the hair the hair the hairspray back into the hairspray can. That, that one's a bit laboured, isn't it? The toothpaste one that works better. But anyway, we can't we can't undo that. We are we are in an Amazon world now, and we have to deal with that Amazon world. There's no point wishing that we were back in an un-Amazon world any more than. The, the Brexiters should solve things by thinking we can go back to an un-Europeanized world. The world has changed and it's changed in many different ways. Has it changed for the better? Sometimes. Has it changed for the worse? Quite a lot of times. But do we make things right again by going back to the way they were? No, we don't. It's not possible. We've, we've grown up, we've changed, we've changed the world in a way that we may not like, but we have changed it and we have to deal with what we've done. And we are all guilty of that. And as, a, as an older person who may soon lose the vote if some people get their way in return for 16-year-olds getting the vote, do I think that's a good thing? No, of course I don't, but that's a separate issue. So, should you go and see this film? Absolutely. Is it worth your money? Absolutely. Uh, will you learn anything from it? Yes, you will. Guess that's it. See you next time. And it's raining, so I should be going out on my bike. Well, no, it's raining, so I'm going to go on Swift rather than go out on my bike. And just to go back, Dentures, Guns and Money, The Diary of a Home Care Worker by Rita Nemo with Julian Hutchings is available from Amazon. Thanks for watching.